We have a couple of 100,000 specimens within the collection. The collection is, is there for everyone to access. And it's not just scientists that use our collections in their research, but it is artists as well. And they're often interested in the structure and texture of corals. Acropora is usually amongst most reefs, so it's a cosmopolitan type of coral. The shape and general structure for that is known as a branching coral. Those essentially will provide um, nooks and crannies and crevices for other animals such as fishes to live and nurse their young. And then we have um, what are known as builder corals. So they're a bit like the bricks and mortar of um, the foundation of the coral reef. So they're providing a basis for other corals or other sponges, in fact, to latch onto, to embed themselves, to then start building their structure. Each coral, um, when they start out forming in life, they have ex hexagonal shapes formed. But in terms of identification processes for individual corals, um, you'd often be looking at the coralites. So they are these kind of pitted structures within a coral, mostly circular in shape. But when you look within those structures themselves, they have different shapes that are unique to the individual, either the genus or the species of a coral. We've got some extremely large specimens of corals of the Turbinaria genera and they were collected in the late 1880s. They were unique because they were such large specimens but they also gave coral scientists at that point in time, it allowed them to identify this type of coral to species a lot easier because the coralite, they were magnified so it allowed them to identify and see the differences. I don't just have one favourite coral, I have two, purely because most of the corals, when, when they die, they're a form of beige or white. Um, I love these two specimens because they have a bit of colour. So we've got Tubipora musica. When that dies, essentially, it still retains the red colour in its structure, and that's really beautiful. When you look at it closely, it has lots of um, little tubes like organ pipes, so it's a very um, interesting structure to look at. And the other one of my favourites is um, a Heliopora blue coral. And essentially, even when you cut through the coral, it's, it's a lovely pale sky blue. Corals is kind of like the basis. It's the home. It's like the grand hotel in the ocean that's supporting a lot of other life. But the reefs themselves, because they've got so much species diversity, you're able to monitor the quality of the world's oceans in that particular space because coral reefs are an indicator of how good the water quality is. James Cook University in Australia, they're currently looking at the tips of Acropora the growing tips have brightly coloured uh, pigments to prevent them from getting sunburn. Perhaps in the future they will be looking at using this coral chemical in, in human sun cream as well. This kind of research that might have an impact on humans and, and how we live our lives does show why we do need to conserve the reefs because there's still a lot more that we need to learn about them. There's still a lot of new species of coral that are undiscovered and it's supporting other animal life too.